so far to Harbor Wolf. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our sand. It's likely that part of the reason modern audiences feel so disconnected from the time of the dinosaurs is due to their inaccurate portrayals in media. Of course, we all love Jurassic Park, but it's planted an image in our mind of an animal, several in fact, that didn't actually exist. So today, let's take a look at a family of dinosaurs with direct descendants who still do exist today, Dromosauridae, also known as raptors. More specifically, we'll be looking at the dinosaur that inspired Steven Spielberg's predators, the Deinonychus. Let us return to that ancient era when dinosaurs roamed the Earth. This pair of male and female Deinonychus have been awake since the crack of dawn. Like many birds of prey alive today, they prefer hunting during the daylight, making use of their superior eyesight. Unknown to them, the two hunters have stumbled upon the watering hole of a number of small bird-like dinosaurs much like themselves, and while the potential prey is no longer visible, it can certainly be smelled. It's hunting time.
it's no good. The little creatures are too quick, and having lost the element of surprise, their prey have escaped into the heavy woods. There's no finding them now. It's time for our hunters to move upwind and keep their noses held high. Unlike their later descendants, the Deinonychus' large nasal cavities suggest a powerful sense of smell, much more important without a bird's eye view. Despite the streamlined look of the animal's feathers, as well as its Hollywood reputation, Deinonychus was not a long-term runner. Most likely an ambush hunter, they would have walked for long periods to conserve energy before expending a short burst in a quick moment to kill their prey. Our hunters assess the situation. Hadrosaurs are good prey, being large and mostly defenseless. Their numbers make it difficult, as more eyes creates a more sensitive warning system should an ambush be detected. It would be ideal if one of the animals would separate from the others. The easiest option, of course, would be the Gallimimus already dead in the clearing. However, as our hunters wait, they see a much bigger problem, the animal that brought the Gallimimus down. Gigantosaurus, a large theropod that dominated its territory during the early Cretaceous. Easily too powerful for our pair of Deinonychus, they decide to move on. There is no safety with that apex predator around. These armored dinosaurs, Notosaurus, are also far too powerful for Deinonychus to take on. However, unlike many ankylosaurids, these animals lack a club tail, taking away their usual primary weapon. The Deinonychus are considering surrounding the one that is separated from the others, but before they can, yet another problem raises its head. Another Deinonychus. Contrary to popular belief, Deinonychus did not hunt in packs, and while there is little evidence of dinosaur cannibalism, this one sees our hunters as a threat. There is no hiding from each other, and before we know it, the fight is on. Deinonychus would have fought much like modern birds. Their hands are meant less for attacking and more for grasping, and so the strength in their legs would be used to attack with the scythe-like claw on their feet. The fight is a draw. With our hunters too drained of energy to effectively beat back their opponent, they retreat to lick their wounds. 
By now, the sun is getting low in the sky. If our hunters are to make it another day, they will need to find food soon. They decide to return to the watering hole of the earlier hadrosaurs, hoping the titanic gigantosaurus has moved on. The watering hole is deserted. The hadrosaurs have moved on, and the apex predator is asleep somewhere. Only one hadrosaur remains, perhaps too old or sick or tired to carry on with the others. It isn't an honorable target, but there is no honor among the starving. There is a popular theory that dinosaurs like Deinonychus engaged in distraction displays. Many modern animals are known to draw attention to themselves sometimes for mating purposes, and sometimes to keep focus off of the young. It is not unrealistic to suggest that Deinonychus may have used distraction displays for predatory reasons. While this hadrosaur is watching the Deinonychus across the water, he never even heard the second one sneak up behind him. Our pair of Deinonychus lived to fight another day. Like birds, they lack the proper teeth to masticate their food, and instead simply tilt their heads back and allow the meat to drop down their throats unchewed. Properly fed, and needing to take the time to rest and digest, the two Deinonychus lay down and close their eyes, preparing for another day of chaos tomorrow. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. If you want to support me further, consider becoming a member or a patron or checking out my merch or my Amazon links. Thank you, and I will see you over the curve, Space Cowboys. self-importance, the delusion that we have some